here. And you'll see the kind of patterns of uh, innovation and development that I think will be familiar. And you'll also see a lot of very funny haircuts and clothing, because it is, it is 20 years old. But um, uh, let's take a look and let's hope that this works. There's 10, 15 seconds of black at the beginning. So you just have to be patient and you have to see if the audio is working. You test the video, but not the audio. themselves in there and they were so excited they were all bubbly. This was 1983 which was like the summer of love of personal computers and anything was possible. Steve Young tells us about a brand new computer program company that has come out of nowhere. A year and a half ago the company didn't exist. Now it has 215 employees housed in East Cambridge in an old factory that used to make valves. There's going to be a lot of competition, it'll be, you know, some, some punches uh, traded and uh, some back and forth, but that's, that's business, that's software, that's entertainment. If I could dance, I would. A race to see if I could beat my superior at the time was Jim Nancy. We'd find ourselves in the office at 3.34, 5 o'clock in the morning, maybe not leaving until later, 10 at night. A warehouse worker shouldn't be really any different from, you know, uh, Jim Manzi or Janet Axelrod in terms of how they're treated. Certainly their pay is going to be somewhat different, but in terms of how they're treated, there shouldn't be any difference there. And that's something that Janet just constantly beat on people. And right after that, the company started to grow and grow and grow. in the same week. The whole company was asked to go over to the manufacturing area to ship one of our products so that we could get it out on time. Secretaries and vice presidents, product managers, developers, working together to uh, assemble the product. It was really fun. We had people that were working on the lines, people that were working on the actual uh, shipping and the boxing. It was really Lotus displaying its corporate value of teamwork. Finally, somebody from, I don't even know what department, a person I had never seen before, rode down to the company who was producing the slides, picked up an emergency set, jumped on a plane, flew to Toronto, got in a cab, rushed over to the hotel where we were, and calmly walked up the aisle, inserted the tray of slides, and pushed the arm button, and then picked up from there exactly the way this was supposed to happen. And nobody there even realized that there had been a problem. Basically, everybody worked together to get jazz out the door in English version within a few days. After that, we launched French and German versions with only four weeks of the US ship. At the time, it was a record. It's a record that's never been beaten. Going out, talking to 150 customers in a room, and they get excited by where we're going with our strategy, because they view us as a partner in their business planning decisions. Uh, it's a really terrific place to work. Then, to our absolute amazement, um, when all was said and done, we had raised $33,000 for Oxfam and Project Bread. Lotus paid for the entire party, and on top of that, they matched all of the funds that people gave so that our money really went a long way. Lotus culture doesn't just stop at Cambridge. It's, it's over in Windsor, it's over in France, in Paris, it's over in Germany, Munich, and now it's going to places like Sweden, Italy, 